What's up guys, it's Tyler. I'm here with my buddy Danny talking about his uh, panhead. My name is Danny Bankston. Uh, this is my 1957 FLH chopper. And uh, yeah, I love this bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and how long have you been into the bikes? Uh, well, I started, uh, I think 2015, I got my first scooter. I had a Honda Elite. 80. That was the first one. Um, and I uh, then upgraded to a Yamaha Riva. And then from there I got a Honda Magna. No, Magma? Magna? I don't know. One of the, that, whatever the Honda uh, V-Twin that they made. Would uh, you ride the scooter around LA? Dude, I rode the scooter like, I'd ride it all the way down to Fullerton and shit. <laughs> I rode the, the Elite 80 all the way down to Fullerton. And then I remember, like, I destroyed the engine, like, going... I rode to fucking, like, Huntington Beach on the... No Bay. way. And, like, on the way back, my bike broke down in, like, South Central, the scooter, and I called my buddy Derek. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I need help. Like, I need... Somebody's got to come help me. Like, I can't... The bike won't start anymore. It's smoking a bunch. And he's like, where are you? And I tell him, he's like, what the fuck are you doing down there? Like... You're riding an 80cc scooter. I was like, yeah, I went to Huntington today. He's like, dude, you need to get a fucking motorcycle. Like, those aren't meant to do that. Like, yeah. Would, why just buy a fucking motorcycle? So I ended up getting a, a Honda Magna for, I think, $1,000. <clears> and uh, rode the shit out of that. Um, but my buddy, who had sort of taught me how to ride, had a Sportster. And he sort of showed me how to ride a motorcycle, like, on a Sportster. Oh, okay. I don't even remember you with the Sportster. I had that one Sportster. I went on the first big ride, which was like, for me, my first big ride was uh, that Cameron's birthday. Remember like we all, it was like, maybe like one of the first Lone Pine trips. Yeah. Like, we went to El Mirage first. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that was 2017. Okay. And that trip was like sort of the catalyst for me to like, I, it opened my like, eyes and world to like choppers and just different types of bikes that I had no access or reference to otherwise you know like um so that trip sort of like changed my life in a lot of ways because yeah I, I went on that trip and immediately I was like okay I probably should do something different than this like sportster that I got for 2500 bucks like <laughs> maybe eventually I want to have a chopper or build a bike myself or something so I rode that, I rode the fuck out of that bike. I rode it to multiple times to like Lone Pine and stuff like that, to the Sequoias, down to Mexico. Um, it definitely like was the vehicle that like gave me the bug of like, you know, getting into motorcycles and like more than just like something that I take to the, you know, to commute or whatever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did the sort of classic, like, you know, put like eight overs on it and like <laughs> change the seat. Oh, you know, yeah. You know, put a sissy Get bar Get the big sissy bar, yeah, rewired exactly. it, yeah. first got the tank. It felt like I was, you know, fucking an easy rider or some shit. Oh, like yeah. That. That's the standard. <laughs> That's like, there's nothing that gets me more excited Let's than see. when I see someone I don't know on a swing arm Evo sports yeah. car, eight over, like, and I know they're Gringo just so stoked. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like, and you know they're just getting it. Like they're getting it, dude. And probably riding more than any of us. Oh, too. of course. I I rode. <laughs> I mean, I yeah. I definitely put more miles on my sports for those first few years yeah. than any dude. Yeah, it's the amazing, best. Amazing bikes. Um. So you got out of the Sportster, you got the Softail. Sold the Sportster, and then I found a Softail Springer in Phoenix that I got. Uh, spent. I think I got it for four grand. And was that your birth year? No, that came later. Um, this was a 1990 Softail Springer FX STS. Um, went to Phoenix, picked it up, brought it back, rode it for a little while, and then I found a uh, rigid frame at the swap meet. Um, and the whole idea of me getting the Softail was a buddy of mine had just sort of Nick. Uh, O'Brano was like, well, yeah, like, you know, if you get a soft tail, like, you can sort of copy and paste and just put it in a rigid frame if you want. You know, like, it's, everything's there. It's just easy. Yeah. So I did that. <clears throat> uh, 
chopped that thing gradually. Like it, you know, initially I just sort of put everything from the stock soft tail into a rigid frame, and then eventually I ditched the split tanks. You know, like painted a tank myself. Um, just did a little shit. Got to see, you know, all the typical stuff. Had a sissy bar, all that stuff, and um, I ended up then COVID hit. And a buddy of mine, I rode the shit out of that soft tail. I had it forever, I probably like four years, something like that. And um, I then, COVID hit, my buddy sold me a roller, which is sort of like, which is the bike I was riding when I found it. Like, so COVID hit, I build a bike during COVID. Um, it's another Evo, but with a cow pie transmission. Um, it's the first bike I built from the ground up. Um, and I rode it all over the place. I rode that one for probably about a year. You finished that right before we went to Lone Pine on that trip, right? Yeah, I you finished just it just like a month in. before. Yeah, yeah. I like probably fit, put it together like because we did that trip. What that was like twenty twenty one, so it was like yeah. a good year into COVID, yeah. you know. And so like I think I built that bike in probably like six to eight months, and then yeah, we did that trip, and that was the first time I really like took it out. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. And then. That brought you to this? So that brought me to this. So we're on the Lone Pine trip. Um, and uh, on the ride back, it's the last day, everybody's sort of leaving at different times. And uh, I'm riding with our friend Ty and uh, Sam and Grant, maybe another couple folks, I can't really remember. I remember it was definitely us four though. And we get south of Lone Pine to like Olancha, which is I think 40 miles south of Lone Pine, maybe 30. And um, Ty's uh, Wassel tank just uh, cracks. And he's like drenched in gasoline. Like I look over at him and he's just got the gas just spraying on him. So we pull over, realize his, yeah, his, his Wassel cracked in the like sort of like where the backbone, the tunnel is. Um, and uh, we call Napa Dave, and um, so Dave is, Napa Dave is the guy who owns the Napa Auto Parts in Lone Pine, and it's like you can go there and you know buy a one and a half inch drive belt or like he's got chopper parts and panhead parts and knucklehead parts out at Napa Auto Parts in the middle of California. Um, we call him. He's like, I'm out of town, but I have a friend who it lives in Olancha who has like a shop and he can help you weld the tank back up. So everybody leaves. I stay behind with Ty and I'm like, I got nothing else to do that day. So long for it just to be there. So he's not doing it alone. Um, and, uh, what happens? We end up going to this guy's house in the middle of the nowhere off of 395. We get in there and he just has like a treasure trove of like <laughs> fucking everything. Like, Two knuckleheads, two or three knuckleheads, four or five panheads. He's building a flathead. Um, he's just got like a shipping container filled with bikes. Just in Olandra. Yeah. And no one's gotten there first. No. Nobody like like I don't even want to say his name because I think he doesn't want to, people to know. Yeah. But yeah, he uh, this guy. So yeah, we go. He helps us weld the tank up get back on the road, make it home. I get his phone number. We sort of stay in touch. He's a cool old timer, you know, big white beard, like sort of exactly what you picture. Um, fast forward about a month or two later, um, I start thinking about like, okay, now I have two Evo choppers. I think I could probably swing selling one of them or two of them if like, you know, I get the amount of money I want for them and I can parlay that into panhead money or Jenny shovel money or something. Um, so I put both of them up online and uh, the Springer bike, first the uh, first the, the bike that I built that I took on that trip um, sold. I sold that one to that skater, Ronnie Sandoval. Yeah. Um, he uh, comes and buys that one, and then I have my other bike up, and at this point I'm like, well, I don't need to sell that. Like, I probably, I got enough money from the complete bike I just sold, like, buy an engine and, you know, like, start piecing something together, whatever. Yeah. Um, and uh, then this guy who's a, a musician named Goth Babe, he uh, finds my bike on OfferUp, 
And I was about to like take it down. I just put it up for like a price. I was like, man, nobody's gonna want to buy this. Whatever. Yeah. I was like about to take it down, and then he hits me up, and he's like, I really want this bike. Can we talk on the phone? We talk on the phone, and um, I'm like, I don't know if I want to sell it. Like I was kind of having second thoughts. Like this bike's special to me. Yeah. Uh, long story short, he ended up like offering me a little more money than I asked for, and at this point, I'm like, okay, I've got like money to build a panhead, buy a panhead, whatever. I always wanted a panhead. Yeah. I got into this stuff. Um, and uh, then what? Then I um, I sell both of those bikes. I go with like a wad of cash to Hanford swap meet. I think I'm gonna find something there. I don't find anything there. Strike, strike out there. I call that guy in Olantia. I called him as soon as I sold the second bike. And I was like, hey, like, don't know if you want to sell anything you have or if you have any friends who maybe want to sell something that they have, but I'm looking to buy. I would love to buy a panhead, you know, maybe a generator shovel, like, you know, something. Yeah. He's like, no, I don't have anything, um, but I'll keep my ears out for you. And then, um, he uh, ends up uh, a week after Hanford, I get a phone call from him. And he's like, actually, I've thought about it a little more. And um, I have a 1957 FLH chopper ready to go. Uh, matching bellies, uh, you know, original drivetrain, transmission, full ones with the engine. Like, it's ready to go. Um, it runs, it rides. You can come up here and ride it if you want. We'll figure something out. And uh, yeah, I went that next weekend and uh, bought this bike. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Did you haggle him down a little bit or was he pretty firm? He was already asking a very fair price. That's nice. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. And uh, the bike was a little different when you got it, right? So when I got it, it had like a pretty goofy uh, bar enterprises sprung seat on it it was like huge um it definitely like the story was that this guy got it from a buddy and the buddy ended up dying from alcoholism he drank a lot of coors and uh <laughs> and uh, uh the bike just sort of sat like he bought it from the widow or you know a friend or whatever whoever was in charge of the estate whatever he gets the bike for fairly cheap doesn't ride it because, in his words, he doesn't really ride, you know, choppers much anymore. He just rides the stock bikes, yeah. um, or he rides like his swing arm bikes. You know, this dude's got like a, a sixty-five pan head. It's fully stock. Yeah, like, it's fucking. You know, so I, I, I don't. I understand why he wouldn't touch this. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it had like a goofy seat on it. It had um, some split tanks on it, which I love the split tanks. Um, but what I ended up doing was the first time I pulled the split tanks off to I rewired the bike because it was like a really bad wiring job from the seventies. Like just no uh, no uh, what's it called? Um, no soldering at all. No like bullet connectors. Just twisting wire together and putting a fuck ton of uh, electrical tape on it. That's boss. That was the whole vibe. That is boss. And stuff kept going wrong, so I was like, I pulled it, I started, like, okay, time to rewire the bike. Uh, I rewired, I pulled the tanks off, and I noticed there's just a mountain of Bondo, like, on the backbone. <laughs> like, huh, all right, that's probably not good, but I'm gonna, it's, there's no problem, so I'm not going to, like, make problems. Yet. Yeah. Um, and then my, uh, that, those tanks kept, uh, the mounts kept breaking. It broke, like, three or four times, and... So then I was like, maybe I should probably look at what's under that Bondo. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the way that they raked this thing in back in the day was that they cut the, the backbone, uh, like took a chunk out, you know, uh, heated up the neck and put like a piece of steel rod through there and just bent it back. And that's how they did it. And then instead of repairing the backbone, they just got like a sort of half tube half piece of like steel tubing and just put it on on top and welded that and put a shit ton of bondo and that was it so the 
the, uh, the backbone is just like gradually sort of uh, moving the whole time. That I'm wow. Riding. It's the 70s special. Yeah. So at that point, the tank, I, I had this Wasso tank sitting around for a while. Um, and a buddy of mine who's a uh, sign painter, I hit him up to do like a copycat paint job. Had the frame repaired, you know, to an extent. It probably could still be repaired better, but um, it's good enough for now. And uh, and yeah, so I uh, did a copy. Like the, it's an exact replica of the tanks that were on there, but except instead of split tanks, it's a, it's a little guy. So that's nice. And it had a Harley Springer, right? It had a forty-five Springer, which um, I always wanted on my bike until I got one that was like really fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody, you know, they extended it and probably whoever did that genius job on the frame did this front end too because yeah. it was pretty jank and there was like weird, you know, braze, brazing all over it and like cracks that I discovered. But the first time I took it down to Reunion, uh, Craig Kramer, he fucking like, he's like, yo, you should come check this out really quick. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck's he gonna tell me? And he like, like, look under your springer. And there's like this big like hairline fracture that just like goes from one of the rear legs like all the way around the rear leg and sort of down. And like you could see that it had been repaired one time before, but it was like. It just wasn't good. So I had that repaired, rode it for a while, and then I eventually just went away, got rid of it, and put on a uh, Hydroglide front end that has, I think these are 14 over. Wow. And I always just sort of liked the look and the feel of like a good wide glide. Yeah. And it happened that, you know, a buddy had some trees, and then another buddy had some uh, tubes, you know. 14 over is pretty beefy. I feel like that's kind of the longest you can really go on them, right? Yeah, it's like 12 to 14, somewhere in there. Um, but it's uh, it rides great because of the rake. Like, you know, it doesn't feel like you're like... Yeah. It feels fairly, like, standard. Um, does not feel like it, that you're running that far over stock. Um Obviously, it's you know it's not a short front end, but it's it doesn't it doesn't feel crazy to ride it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, you look bad as hell on it. Oh, thank you. And then, uh, yeah, what else? I um, so yeah, I just sort of you know gradually sort of like made it my own bike. Hopefully, like I wanted to nod to all the stuff that it came with, like the you know the the paint job and all that stuff and the original owner. Have you uh, have you chatted with the dude in Atlanta since? Have you sent him? Oh yeah, no, I've seen. I I talked to him on the phone actually last week, and then I went up. Uh, I went up to Lone Pine for something a little while ago, and I stopped by and we hung out for a minute. Sick. Saw his flathead. We just finished. It's fucking killer. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, and then I saw Dave at the uh, swap meet that the Hanford swap meet this last year. Or couple weeks ago or whatever we talked and stuff and yeah it's uh but it's cool because it's like you know i don't know like again uh our mutual friend nick obrono he uh sort of was like a he was like a like a, a elder wizard or something like that I, th you know I, mean? I think like, Nick's weird. Me and Cody always call him Uncle Nick. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like he weirdly has had like kind of a hand. In oh like yeah. So many things, or there's just been so many times where like he'll say something and I'll think about it oh, for totally. like weeks. Like I'm like, but what did Nick mean by that? Well, there's no and like then... simple co quick conversation. It's always this big existential. Like, <laughs> you think about everything that he tells you and like take it to heart and like. So like when I sold both of those bikes, I like call him and I'm like telling him my plans and stuff like that. And he's like, I really want to think about like either you, if you're going to build a bike, like you got to figure out exactly what year motor you want to do and why and all this stuff. He's like, you should do a 65 if you're going to do it. And um, he's like, or, you know, like go to Tahunga and put up signs and like, you know, go like <laughs> just, just sort of let the bike come to you, you know, like. 
just put out word and like let the universe do its thing. And that's like exactly how it fucking happened. You know, yeah. like I had no plans. I, I could have ridden back that day with everybody else, but I decided, you know, it was all 100% right place, right time. I happened to be on that ride with everybody, happened to be with Ty that morning and left with him at that exact time. His tank happened to crack in that tiny city town in the middle of fucking nowhere. And then, um, you know, Napa Dave happened to be out of town that day and we ended up meeting this other guy and just all the stars perfectly aligned and this bike just sort of effortlessly became mine. So, yeah. I love that. I think it's cool, you know, I think I try to like, when I'm explaining kind of this like hobby, I mean, I wouldn't even call it a hobby at this point, it's just like my it's life, life, you know, yeah. like, when I, when I try to explain the bikes to people that aren't really, like, into it or, like, don't really know, you know, uh, and I'm like, yeah, like, you can't, like, buy one. And they're yeah. like, what, what do you mean? And I was like, well, like, they're not for sale anywhere. Like, you can, yeah. like, look and you could you could find one for sale, totally. but, like, you can't just decide, like, I'm going to buy a Panhead today and yeah. then, like, go somewhere and buy one. Yeah. Like, you have to, like, diligently be looking and be looking and, like... You know, this part of the world that, you know, this world. Yeah. Like, you have to want to find them, and, you know, they have to want to find you, too. It's like, these things have fucking souls, like, I swear to God. Like, I know that's fucking, <laughs> but I, I swear to fucking God, this bike has, like, feelings and emotions and a soul. Because it, some days it, like, loves me, and everything's perfect, and it's just, like, a dream. And other days, like, it just does not want to cooperate at all. Yeah. And that's, I think true of a lot of I mean they're you know they're this fucking old like they've gone through so many hands and they're still here and we're just caretakers absolutely man I feel I feel the same way you know sometimes like you feel like you gotta bond with it too before it really treats you well like yeah. I feel like yeah absolutely it never it never goes how you want it and then sometimes though it'll be a day when you're not expecting anything and like starting the first kick all oh, day and it's and perfect it's running and it and makes like, your fucking year like it, that's like the best day of the fucking month you know yeah. it's like the days that which luckily with this bike it's given me like a lot of good you know there hasn't been a lot of uh, bad times with this thing right now it is giving me some issues but it's all you know stuff that will get figured out um, but it's a journey and it's you know that's corny but like it's fucking true it's like, you know. <laughs> I love it. But it's, yeah, you just gotta fucking, I don't know. I don't think I could ever sell this bike. Which, that's what they're fucking going for now. <laughs> <laughs> there's been, there's been a couple times I'll come into the shop and I'll have like the best ride. I remember like a couple months ago, I was like, it's like, Cody, I'm like sitting at his desk, I'm like, Cody, film me. And he's like, what? And I'm like, just take your phone yeah. out. And then I looked at the camera and I was like, I'm Tyler Whelan. I will never sell my 1949 EL. I will never sell it. This is proof. Killer. Well, thank you, Danny. Thank you. Fuck yeah. Ready? Yeah.